So in the design industry, Stripe is known for these really cool looking gradients on their website. So in this video, we're going to try to recreate some of these gradients utilizing Framer's new gradient functionality. Let's go. We've already kind of got the base of this project set up. And what we want to do is kind of customize this background gradient here to give it a little bit more life. And we're going to do this entirely in Framer because Framer recently released a new feature which allows us to have more control over gradients. So the first thing we're actually going to do is select this background frame that I've got here. And we're actually going to create it as a component just so we have it on its own sort of canvas uh, and we can kind of have a little bit more control. So we'll call it backgrounds and we'll go into the component here. And now we can kind of start customizing it to look and feel a little bit more like Stripe. Now, I think it's important to note just by the kind of functionality that we do have here, we're not going to get a perfect replica by any means, but I think this is kind of just going to show you guys how powerful we can get it uh, just using Framer alone. So what we're going to do is let's add a new gradient over the whole background here. And I actually reckon we can go uh, something from like maybe like a red and then maybe in the middle here, we have a bit more of that blue color coming in and then maybe towards the end we have a bit more of a, a pinky color again and maybe we add a couple more uh areas of blue just so it just so we can get something a little bit nicer coming in there yeah that looks good yeah great awesome and i think the real trick here is to kind of like stack frames on top of frames so we can kind of create all these sort of like dimensions of different uh gradients so if i draw in a new frame here and remember this is going inside uh the parent frame so this is our background one that we've already set and now we can add a new gradient over the top so maybe we add something like a bit of yellow and maybe we take this uh, from like a purple to a yellow and that looks pretty good and maybe we uh, figure out the best way to kind of switch this around yeah something like that looks absolutely great and then what we can actually do here is you know we can rotate it a little bit and figure out how we want to position this on our canvas but we can also go in and add a new style and we're gonna go and we're gonna add a filter and we're going to add a blur. So we're actually gonna start blurring these edges a little bit more. As you can see, like we, this makes it just a little bit better in terms of actually making those gradients feel a little bit more connected. So let's go through and let's maybe size this up a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. Make sure it takes up as much space as we possibly can. And let's go through and add another frame. So I'm actually just going to duplicate this one for now. And I'm going to go through and I'm just going to change the positioning. And we'll make sure we get the right one selected. And let's change the colors as well. So maybe we go for that little bit more of a lighter color this time. And let's bring the purple back in there. So we'll bring it up like this. And you can see already just like you know, with a matter of just a couple of different things, we actually have a lot more sort of control over how this works. I actually want to add another one in here too. So I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to draw a new frame and uh, we're going to make sure it's on a new layer and we're going to go in and we're going to select this radial one and we're going to make the outside opacity to be zero and we're going to just use this inside to create a little bit of an accent. So I want a little bit more, eh, maybe we go for a little bit of a, a lighter color just in here. Maybe a bit of like white in there too and try to size it up and we'll just drag it so it kind of sits behind. Now, I still think there's a little bit uh, too strong there. So what I'm gonna do is go back in and we're gonna add another blur and we're just gonna size that up. Okay, great. So now if we go to my home, you actually start to see that this feels a little bit more like stripe.com. Now, if we do look at the Stripe website, we can tell that there is some movement and some animation happening. So we can replicate this to a degree uh, inside of Framer. So what we're gonna do is actually open up that component once again. So I'm gonna just go to my asset panel and click on the backgrounds. And we're going to add a new variant and we're just gonna make it that uh, we're gonna rotate some of these and we're just gonna make them feel a little bit different. Now, the other way to kind of do animation 
functions, which is probably the preferred way. But since we've set things up as a component, we're actually just going to uh, use some interactions to animate between some of these states. But my recommendation would be to actually take this and actually uh, use some other effects within here. So let's change the colors as well. So we make it a little bit different. Let's, you know, make this a little bit more blue and then maybe uh, this one here can be a red or maybe we leave that white and then maybe we make uh, that yellow and uh, we, want, we want it to be something else here. And we just want to create a couple of different variants with a couple of different like feels. Nothing too dramatic in terms of what they're actually switching between, but just enough to actually create some sort of impact here. And I think that's pretty good. Let's actually remove this one for that. And maybe we change the positioning of these as well. Okay, great. Maybe we size that up. And let's just change the colors so it feels still a little bit better. Remove that frame. Okay, great. So as you can see, we've kind of created these three funny looking gradients here. Now we want to add the animation state between. So what I'm going to do is add an interaction between my first two and it's going to be on a peer. So essentially when this first one appears on the canvas, it's going to transition to number two. Now, if I click on play, you'll notice we get this sort of effect happening almost instantly but we actually want to add a bit of a delay between these. So we'll go back in and we'll make it so on a peer after one second, it's going to switch to this one. And then if we go to variant two and go to variant three, we can actually use the same principle to achieve the same thing. So after two seconds, it's going to go to that. And then same with variant three, we're going to make it link back to the start and it's going to happen again after two seconds. So every time one of these come into view, it's going to automatically start to animate between different uh, different variants. So now if we press play, you'll notice that we can start to transition through these states. Now, as you can see, that kind of delay makes it feel a little bit staggered. So I wonder if we can actually do something to make it slightly better. So let's go in and let's not add a delay and let's just see what happens. So we'll go back in and make sure there's no delay between them. So now it should feel Pretty psycho, but you get the point. So maybe we slow down this just a little bit. So let's go back in here and let's go back into our interaction, set the delay to be 0 0.5 and let's see what that does. Okay, so this is a bit better. As you can still see, it's still a little bit strong and it's still a little bit aggressive in terms of this gradient. But you can see fairly easily like the power we do actually have here with creating some cool gradients uh, using components and the new gradient functionality in Framer. If you enjoyed this video and you want more Framer content like this, consider subscribing to the channel. And also if you're interested, check out the Ultimate Framer Masterclass, which is my A to Z course on learning Framer. Until next time, I'll catch you later.